Hello, and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News Channel. Today, we're actually going to take a look at um, this whole thing with all these theories of why alts are crashing, and we're going to really, really take a look at the Tether theory, because I think that's the only theory that actually makes sense. I have to thank CryptoZRUs for his video, because he really kind of brought it to light how... Um, I think they might be actually exercising this theory that I think like Tone Vase was advocating to print a billion Tether each month to crush all the altcoins. But even though they're falling with respect to Bitcoin ratio, the plan isn't really working if that's what they actually plan to do. And if you're looking for a for an exchange to really cast suspicions on, it's not Binance, it's Bitfinex. Bitfinex has always been the one to actually be associated with Tether. Yes, it's Bitfinex. It's not Binance. Um, the whole theory with, you know, I guess some of the XRP army submitting evidence or files to the SEC saying that uh, Binance is somehow crashing the price of XRP for their benefit somehow. I'm pretty sure they just sent a bunch of colored confetti paper to the SEC, and that's really not going to cut it as evidence. But let's get back to the uh, Tether theory of how they're printing Tether to basically prop up BTC and make all the other alts look bad. And... The fact that they're not really crushing uh, the price of alts, at least not if you look at the USD price, it's just making alts look really bad in comparison to BTC because they're basically propping BTC value up. And this gives more credence to perhaps the theory that Bitcoin price was propped up um, in the entire last bull run uh, at the end of 2017 by Tether as well. Now, Tether has existed for until uh, since 2015. But um, the thing about right now is that they're actually using the more printing of Tether to actually float BTC up. I will also talk about futures and other things like that and how that might be actually affecting the market. But since we're talking about theories of why Bitcoin is pumping and um, why and the alts aren't pumping while it's pumping but the alts are dumping when it's dumping now bitcoin has pulled up the rest of the market as well i mean if you look at any of the other top at all of the top 10 coins except for xrp they're basically all up in usd value since the beginning of the year so you can't say that bitcoin is the only one that's actually gained value it might be the one that has gained the most value i won't debate you on that because it's numerically it's i think it's true but you can't say it's the only one that's actually gained value because out nine out of the well eight out of the top ten coins tether doesn't really count have actually gained value since the beginning of the year with XRP being the only exception and even for XRP it hasn't really dropped too much in USD value since the beginning of the year I think on January first it was thirty five cents and now it's thirty three cents so that represents a less than ten percent drop but if you look at Ethereum it was like a hundred bucks at the beginning of the year now it's two seventy four that's almost a three x increase now it's not as good as like Bitcoin's three point eight x increase. But still, Litecoin was like 30 bucks at the beginning of the year. It's actually increased just as much as Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin Cash was, you know, after that hash war, it got destroyed. It was basically 100 bucks at the beginning of the year too. So it's increased almost as much. Even EOS, which has been dropping like a rock lately, is 474, and it was like two bucks at the beginning of the year. Binance Coins detached itself from Bitcoin for the most part, but but even it's being but even it's being affected the last couple of days by the drop so the whole theory of how this suppressing xrp benefits binance coin just goes out the window because that doesn't make any sense never did bitcoin sv is trash but it's down as well and tron you know it's i think it was like two cents at the beginning of the year now it's 2.8 cents so you can actually see that all these coins are actually up i'm not actually sure about stellar because stellar generally follows xrp up and uh, since XRP hasn't really gone up, I don't think Stellar's really gained much either. Cardano, I think, was four cents at the end of the year. Now it's six point six. Um, and I can see that most of these coins have actually gained value since the beginning of the year. Even this V Chain coin that I've actually that I've been holding, you know, it was 0.38, uh, 0.38 pennies at the beginning of the year. Now it's 0.62 pennies. So it's actually also increased by about sixty percent in terms of USD value. It's just not kept up with Bitcoin because Bitcoin's went up by like 300% since the beginning of the year. So if you're thinking about it's altcoin Armageddon, it's not altcoin Armageddon. Most like 90, like 90% 90 of these coins have actually gained USD value um, since the beginning of the year. They've just kind of died 
um, with respect to Bitcoin because Bitcoin has gained more. Now, why this makes sense in terms of Tether is Tether is used to buy up Bitcoin when it actually dumps. So it actually floats Bitcoin price and it's also used to buy Bitcoin price to pump it. But since they're only using Tether to pump Bitcoin, it doesn't affect the other coins as much. Yes, the other coins are being dragged up in terms of USD value by Bitcoin. And you can see that throughout most of the market. Like I said, the major the vast majority of coins have actually gained dollar value in terms of um, since the beginning of the year. They just haven't gained Bitcoin value because Tether is being directly pumped into Bitcoin um, and not into these other coins. So Tether's basically floating the Bitcoin price of Bitcoin way up. It's pulling the rest of the market up. But since the Tether's not being used for the rest of the market, it's not pulling up the rest of the market as much as Bitcoin. It's very, very easy to understand. And when it drops, Tether is used to buoy the price of Bitcoin so it doesn't drop too much, but it doesn't, but it isn't really used to buoy the rest of the market. So the rest of the market actually drops more. So essentially, even though overall, um, in terms of USD, the market is way up, including alts, Bitcoin rises up even more because of the printing of 1 billion Tether uh, per month as crypto are us has insinuated and tether is usually is um generally used to support bitcoin uh and since it's generally used to support bitcoin it's it just pumps up bitcoin more than the other markets so in terms of usd price tether is not suppressing the price down of any of the coins it's just only pulling one coin up and that one coin is gaining value against all the other coins and that's why you know i think that it might be a good idea to actually hold on to Bitcoin until it reaches about 20,000, which is its last um, all time high. At that point, I bet a lot of the news channels will start um, probably reporting on it. Uh, searches for Bitcoin might go up and we might have an, a retail FOMO. Now, altcoins are going to require basically a retail based FOMO, not really a utilization based FOMO right now. I think utilization is basically years away still for most of these coins. So you're going to have to depend on a speculative spot market price to make the price of these coins actually go up. I will talk about that in a later video today because um, that is actually pretty obvious to me, but people are still thinking, oh, it's going to be institutional FOMO and all that stuff. No, no, no. Institutions don't really buy on the spot market and the spot market actually determines the exchange price, which you and I actually sell out at. We are not like accredited investors. We don't really trade. Um, well, most of us aren't accredited investors. We don't really trade on the OTC market. So that doesn't really apply to us. We need the spot market price to go up for the overall price to go up. And that depends on retail FOMO because utiliz um, because a price increase based on utilization is years away for almost every single coin right now. They're just getting started in terms of utilization. So that is how the whole tether theory works. It's just being used to prop up Bitcoin. It's not really hurting the USD price of all the other coins, but it's just making them look bad in terms of BTC ratio. So they're not, it's not going to eliminate the altcoins. Um, it's just going to make Bitcoin go up even more. And that means if you're holding altcoins, you're probably getting pretty pissed because you're not really seeing your uh, asset appreciate nearly as much as Bitcoin. And that might actually con uh, continue for a while. So the whole thing with like Binance suppressing XRP price or X uh, exchange suppressing X coin price, I'm pretty sure they just sent a bunch of confetti paper to the SEC. That's not going to cut it. The SEC is not really going to listen to them because they don't really have any real evidence. Um, and I don't really think CZ is guilty of this because it doesn't, he doesn't really have a motive or an incentive to do this. It's just some crazy like theory crafting and people are really gullible to basically any crazy conspiracy theory once their investment starts going down. But they don't realize that because there's no real demand for any of these coins besides Bitcoin, um, and that's artificially uh, basically buoyed up by Tether and probably Bitfinex, that um, that's basically the entire reason if there's like mass manipulation on the market. Now there is another, there is another more straightforward um, explanation for this is that if you look at institutional investment and in funds, 95% of it's in Bitcoin. So institutional money is actually floating into Bitcoin and that might be helping a buoy the price of Bitcoin as well, because it's basically Bitcoin and then some Ethereum. All the other, in terms of institutional investment, it's those two, and Bitcoin takes up like 90, 95% of it. The rest of the coins are basically fighting for scraps of whatever is left. So institutional money is gonna be buoying up Bitcoin and Ethereum more than anything else, mainly Bitcoin. And if you're looking at institutional money, it also makes sense why Bitcoin is uh, rising more than the other coins, because the other coins don't really have that much institutional interest in terms of investment. Um, 
I know there's several large players, several large brokers that really only deal in Bitcoin. And you can see this, you can actually see this like uh, in action with Fidelity. They opened up a OTC trading desk. Which coin did they open it up for? It isn't Ethereum. It is an XRP. It isn't Litecoin. It's Bitcoin. They only have a Bitcoin OTC trading desk. And that's for big buyers. So big buyers are interested in Bitcoin. Same thing with back with futures. Which coin are they opening up with in terms of their futures market? Not Ethereum, not XRP, not Litecoin, not Bitcoin Cash. Yes, it's only Bitcoin. Those things should tell you right there that institutional money is primarily interested in buying Bitcoin and nothing else. And that could be actually booing Bitcoin price up as well. So there you have it, the Tether explanation and the institutional money explanation. You don't really need to make these whack-a-mole theories. Um, I think the Tether theory actually does have some legs. It's been circulating for a while. And I think uh, Cryptos Are Us and other videos like that actually make sense. It's the only one with a plausible explanation. And, uh, plausible reason why whales would actually want to do this. So that is today's video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you and have a nice day.